<laughs> Small thank you to uh, Not a big one.
excited when folks from Mass Adapt to go down to Washington, D.C. a couple of weeks ago. Because it was my first time doing an action in two years before get using mobility aids, I decided, okay, I will just be a legal observer. Disabled advocates are one of the many reasons why yes. this has been, like, successful. Yes. but I am also psychiatrically disabled. Yo. I was recently, a week right, a week before I went to DC, I just came out of a partial hospitalization program that I was in for a month and a half because I have severe post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. And the, the thing that motivated me to go down to DC was when I came out and graduated from my program, I got a bracelet that said, I wish you comfort, hope, safety, and growth. Yeah. If the skinny repeal would have been approved, there would have been no comfort at all yes. for anyone yes. who's in need of health care. There is no hope. There will be no hope if someone is on, like, constantly forging for preventative care yes. because they can't get it. There is no safety in the fact that you're constantly fearing whether or not you have to pay your bills or get help for health. Yes. And there is not going to be growth in this country if we do not even go forward with perhaps getting universal health care. Yes. So everyone has Okay, got it. <laughs> this is a marathon. 
and we absolutely have to keep our energy up. And the way we keep our energy up is by celebrating through self-care and by keeping a long view. I could tell you about a number of statistics, but that's not what captures it for me. For instance, you know, I can tell you that the number one cause of personal bankruptcy in America is unpaid medical bills. That should not, absolutely should not happen in the richest country in the world. It should not happen in a country like America. But what captures this for me is a child that I saw when I was in an emergency room several years ago. It was, when I picked up the chart, I saw that it was a child who was sent from uh, New Hampshire, and that, that was that was before the Affordable Care Act. That was before New Hampshire had the options that we had in Massachusetts. When I picked up the chart, it said abnormal blood test in a three-year-old with lethargy. Now, if there were any doctors here, they would already know what the diagnosis is. We repeated the test, and that beautiful three-year-old child from New Hampshire had leukemia. I thought that the hardest job I had to do was to explain to the family that their child had cancer. And typically, well, the first question any family asks me is, will he be okay? The first question that father asked me was, how will I afford this? And that absolutely broke my heart. And that's why I'm here today, because that question should not be the first question that any father or mother or grandparent or neighbor ever asks. Yeah. But what he told me as to why he was uninsured made me so angry and made me so motivated to be in this fight because this was not somebody who was irresponsible, so to speak, right? This was somebody who had had a good, quote, good job with a large company with excellent health insurance and he had painstakingly saved up enough money to pursue the American dream of working for himself. He had just quit his job. He had just given up employer-sponsored health care, and he had just started his own business. And this was a guy who was probably not more than 30, 35. He had a young family. And health care for individuals was extremely unaffordable. And so he took a gamble, and he thought, you know what, for a few months, I'll, I'll go without health insurance. I've got young kids. What do I need to worry about? And that's when cancer struck. And that's what we also have to remember is that cancer, disease, illness, Zika, whatever it is you want, it doesn't care about your skin color. It doesn't care about your paycheck. It doesn't care about your zip code. It will strike all of us. And the thing is that unless you're willing to stand by and watch your neighbor die, which the reality is, it's been said, people are not like that. We, we are going to pay for it one way or the other. So why not pay for it in a more sensible manner? Why not protect people rather than go into crisis? Yeah. And as was said earlier, right? I mean, stress causes disease. Why are we, why are we here stressing out? We should be able, we should have a sensible system that plans to prevent crisis and allows people to stay healthy. Yeah. And that's what we have to fight for. Yeah. Woo! Woo!
these places did not accept it. And I was basically being told I was going to be back out on the streets with nowhere to go. And by that time, a few weeks had gone by, and a social worker came to me and told me that because I had lo recently lost my job, I was able to get on mass health. And in that hospital, I was filled out the forms and I was given emergency mass health. And without mass health, I know I would have gone back out to the streets and may not have been here today. Like many other of my friends that have passed on, they didn't have that chance. And with the repeal and replace, they were trying to, sit, to take away those benefits, those uh -huh. essential benefits that we need. Yeah. We are human beings that deserve health care. Yeah. Yeah. We are not these Woo! evil people. I just want to say thank you to everyone today. Um, today I work for an amazing, amazing organization. We advocate for individuals. We advocate for everyone out there and with a substance use disorder and mental health disorder. I too also suffer from multiple sclerosis, which is a pre-existing condition. Yeah. And with pre-existing conditions with the repeal in the place, replace, I would have been without health care. Yeah. So thank you all for coming out today. Thank you all for fighting for health care. Thank you all for fighting for each other. We are an amazing, amazing community, so keep up the fight, and thank you. We won a very key battle yesterday, but this fight continues. Yeah. It is not over. The Congress thinks that they can make rules without us. The President thinks that he can make rules without us.
we're so grateful for the national organizations organizing this today across the country. We're also thankful, thankful for our local supporters. Doctors for America, Massachusetts, Planned Parenthood Advocacy Fund, Our Revolution Cambridge, and Indivisible Cambridge. Remember, this fight isn't over, and we will persevere.